Hello and welcome to Who Needs Faith? Videos that are inspired by the written work of Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Today we are going to talk about eternal or everlasting life. But what does eternal life really mean? One of the most well-known verses in the Bible is John 3.16. Do you know what it says? It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So let's break this down so it's easier to understand. The first part says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. So God sent his one and only Son, Jesus, into the world because the sin that was in the world created a barrier that prevented mankind from knowing God and having eternal life. Jesus was the only man to have lived and never sinned. Jesus knew God and chose to give his life so that we could live forever in the presence of God. And we will explain more about that in a moment. The gospel is the good news that God sent Jesus so that our sins would be forgiven. But there is much more to the gospel than that. The real message of the gospel is that God wants to give you eternal or everlasting life. The second part of the verse says that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We know that all living things must eventually die, and that seems sad, doesn't it? It is true that our bodies will eventually die, but it is our spirit that lives on when our bodies are gone. You could say that everyone who has ever lived will continue to live in spirit form. Where we spend eternity depends on the choices we make in our lives here on earth. God gave us a free will to know him in the same way that Jesus had a free will to sacrifice his life for us. If we believe on Jesus, our sins are forgiven, we are born again, and we become pure in our spirit. Because of this, it is possible to have a close, personal relationship with God right now, today, here on earth. In fact, knowing God is eternal life. So what is sin? Sin can be hard to describe in a simple way because it can be very complicated. It is fair to say that sin is any thought or action that is not in line with the will of God. One of the first sins that was committed was when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Because they did this, they lost their innocence and they could no longer have the close relationship with God that they once had. The sin that came into the world through their actions is one of the reasons our human bodies will eventually fail and die today. No matter how hard we try, we will always do things that are wrong. This is because we have inherited a sinful nature from those first people. But God loves us and wants to bring us back into a close, personal relationship with him. He made a way for us to know him again by removing sin's penalty. He did this by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. But wait a minute, why did Jesus actually have to die for us? As God in human form, Jesus lived his life as a man. Jesus would have experienced the hardships that the people of the time would have faced. Despite this, Jesus led a perfect life and did not sin. No one else has ever lived a life on earth without sinning. In the Old Testament, people sacrificed animals so that their sin could be covered before God. It seems hard to understand in modern times, but the reason that animals were sacrificed was because they were innocent and they did not know the difference between right and wrong. And so it was in the days before Jesus that people's sin had to be covered by this type of sacrifice. The only sacrifice that could be made to end the need for all other sacrifices was that of a man who was innocent, who had never sinned 
and who chose to offer his own life freely so that our sins could be forgiven. In this way, the barrier that was between mankind and God would be destroyed forever. That is why it's so important that we believe in what Jesus did for us. God gave us a free will to choose to believe in him. Having faith is believing in God and the sacrifice Jesus made for us even though we can't physically see him and we weren't there when Jesus died and rose again. If we have faith, believe in God and ask him to come into our lives, then we will be saved. But what does it mean to be saved or born again? Being born again is being reconnected to God through our spirit and it's very special. We are being saved from an eternity without God. Salvation or being saved describes what happens when we believe in what the Bible says about who we are, the sacrifice that Jesus made and also when we ask God to come into our lives. God wants us to have an amazing life right now on earth. He offers us a full and abundant life that we could not experience without knowing him. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief, meaning Satan, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God wants a close, personal relationship with you today because he loves you. Our eternal life starts the moment we have faith, believe and ask God to come into our lives. If you have never been born again and you want to ask God to come into your life, click on the link and pray a prayer of salvation with me. It will change your life forever.